Good afternoon, folks. Um, I am back at it again with my crazy, impossible experiments. Um, past week, I've been working on yet another uh, sample of my Glycer Method Castile soap. Um, I know in one of my previous videos, or whatever, I um, indicated that I do have like you know, a full batch that I keep handy, which is hanging out in the crock pot right there, um, that I take samples from. I found that uh, Castile soap behaves very strangely. It doesn't like being tampered with too much, um, especially when you're lowering pH. And so I figured it would be the ideal soap to experiment with because I figure if I can do it with the Castile soap, then it would be so much easier to do with other soap types and, you know, full-on multi-oil blend recipes. Um, with this particular sample, um, I used a, a different method compared to my last video. My last video, I lowered the pH using a combination of citric and lauric acid. Um, we all know as soap makers what citric acid is and what it does, you know, basically. Um, and just to recap, for the lauric acid, the lauric acid is basically one of the primary fatty acid chains in coconut oil. Um, it is what provides the cleansing factor in coconut oil, and it also provides the bubbles that we all love and know that come with making coconut oil soaps. Um, specifically to liquid soap, it dissolves clear. And that is a big plus compared to some people who use like stearic acid because the lauric acid remains clear in your liquid soap. And so if you're trying to achieve a clear solution, you have one less additive that will contribute to marring the clarity um, compared to stearic acid. A stearic acid um, used at certain percentages uh, above a certain point and I personally don't have experience with this. This is just what I've read But stearic acid can cloud and then stearic acid being you know one of the major fatty acid chains in in uh, palm oil and um, a lot of the other hard oils that we use it, It's why those particular oils are not used in liquid soap making unless you don't mind having you know an opaque soap, which some people like the look of that and, and are able to do some pretty cool stuff with it. Um, I prefer the clear soaps. I like the way it looks. I like the jewel tones and stuff like that. But anyways, um, so I chose the lauric acid. Um, another benefit of uh, using the lauric acid, and it is the same with steric, is that it has the ability to thicken. So you have something that lowers pH and it thickens and it also provides um, you know, other minor, minor properties. I found that the whole cleansing and bubbling factor with the lark acid is not as great as it would be you know, just in coconut oil for making soap. Like using the fatty acid by itself, it does not provide that cleansing and bubbling factor. So if you were to choose to use it in your liquid soap, but you don't want to have the, I don't want to say illusion. Um, you don't want to have that false sense of security that your recipe is what made it bubbly when really it's the lauric acid. It's really not. The lauric acid does not play that much of a major role in contributing. Um, it would have to probably be used at larger amounts than I've used it in, in my experiments in order to make a major contribution. Um, so basically you wouldn't have to compare it to say using a s detergent type surfactant in your soaps. Um, those definitely obviously uh, play the role, <sighs> sorry, of, um, of marring your, uh, your bubbling and everything. Sorry about that. I just need to take care of something. Um, anyway, so, but I digress. That's not what this is about. 
Um, I just wanted to recap the lauric acid and what it is and what it can do. Um, another nifty factor of the lauric acid. Yep, uh, I'm, I'm going off track again. Um, in liquid soap, it also lightens the color of your soap. Um, you'll go from that dark tan or amber coloring that a lot of liquid soaps will have to a much lighter color. Um, it may not be that way for all recipes, I don't know. I did see it very notably in the Castile soap, so I can affirm that it lightens the color. Um, that being said, you'd have to experiment to see if you actually like it doing that or not. Um, anyways, that was just the recap of, you know, the use of lauric acid and why I chose that over, say, you know, stearic acid. Stearic acid is a common, you know, soap making additive um, that bar soapers use. Um, anyways, it looks like it's settled out. Um, that is the pH of this batch. And again, um, and I've made this very clear in my last videos, there are no tricks up my sleeve. I didn't do any, you know, switcheroos, you know, pulling out some synthetic detergent, you know, hand washes and dumping it in this cup. I'm pretty honest. I, I'm pretty tra transparent and honest about what I do. I don't want to, you know, deceive people. So this is the pH of this sample. 7.42. Um, like I said with the last batch, I used a combination of steric or lauric and citric acids to lower the pH, and this time I used super fatting to lower the pH. Now, I did come across the trouble with that, um, in that um, the super fatting didn't lower the pH as far as I wanted to. Um, I ran across issues like uh, a bit of a false sense of security or false readings because I was using the microwave to homogenize my mixtures and when I turned around and I poured everything into a pot and did stovetop to get better you know uh, you know more homogenous blends you know just everything mixed in very well you know the difference between the two readings was uh very significant. Um, at one point I thought I did get a good pH of uh, about 7.56 and then when I heated things on the stove top and I thought it was finished and then I, did, uh, I went to go take a final pH reading it had jumped up to like 7.6 or not 7 it's like an 8.6 8.64 something like that I can't remember off the top of my head my notes are on my device um, I keep electronic notes um, so I stopped using the, the microwave for this and started heating everything on the stove top. Uh, I pretty much just wanted to lower the amount of dishes and stuff I was using because this cup is, is uh, microwave proof or microwave safe, so, but you live and you learn. Um, when I did get to that, that 8.5-ish range, I noticed I started plateauing. Um, even though I was adding more super fat, the super fat being olive oil pomace, since this is a Castile soap, um, the more super fat I added at that point, uh, it would not budge. And so rather than continuously adding more oil, which would make the soap oily and, and possibly very unpleasant, I switched over to use the lauric acid and at that point I only used a very small amount like less than a half ounce um, 0.4 ounces to be exact um, I don't like this method of lowering the pH and I'm going to tell you why it's the amount of super fat I had to do based on my um, total calculations I had to do a 45.51% super fat now, um, with liquid soap, when you're super fatting, I hope everybody understands that when you try to super fat liquid soap, you have to use a solubilizer or an emulsifier, something to bind the oils into the mixture with the water because oil and water do not mix and the oil will float out. 
above certain percentages. Um, common knowledge is that above 3%, your fats start separating out. Um, that being said, when using certain solubilizers, it's recommended to do an, an equal one-to-one -one ratio of your oil to solubilizer. And if you didn't quite catch what I mean here, it means that for the 45.51% super fat, I had to use 45.51% to my recipe of solubilizer. So 45% of my recipe of my total batch is of, of any given sample would be solubilizer. And I'm not pleased with that at all. That's, that's not what I want at all. And especially considering the solubilizer that I'm using, I'm using polysorbate 80. And before anybody gets their panties in a bunch and goes, oh my God, why are you using such a nasty synthetic and such a nice natural product? I don't care. I'm just gonna say that right now, I don't care. It's about cost efficiency, not a, a special name, like, you know, natural and or, organic or whatever. Polysorbate 80 is cheap. It's easy to attain. I can buy a, a one pound bottle of Polysorbate 80 for $5. That right there is the big, you know, the big catch all, it's, it's money. Um, especially when you're experimenting, you don't want to waste good materials on something that could go bad, that you know has a possibility of going bad. Um, and I know a lot of soap makers would agree, why would you waste good, expensive materials when you're playing around in your kitchen with certain batches of soap? So that being said, I chose Polysorbate 80 because it's cheap. It's, it's very easy to attain. It's very much readily available by many formulating companies and soap making companies that supply all of our, our needs. Um, there are naturally derived and eco-cert solubilizers on the market, but there aren't that many that are available to us. That's the problem. And with that, they're expensive because there is less of a market for them. They cost more. I'm not going to spend $20 on a little 8-ounce bottle of a solubilizer just to have it washed down the drain. That being said, um, polysorbate, polysorbate 80 basically fit my purposes. Um, but again, the downside is, is I have to use an equal amount of polysorbate to my super fat, which is 45%. Um, so if my 45% of an eight ounce, hmm, I, I want to just like throw a number. Yeah, if my 45% of an eight ounce batch is, uh, 3.5, um, that it's kind of me throwing a number because 45% is kind of close to 50% and you know, half of eight is four. There, that's, you know, where I'm going on. Um, I don't have my actual numbers here. Well, I do, but they're, yeah. <laughs> Y'all aren't gonna understand it, but uh, I do. Um, basically for the 7.8 ounce, there we go, for the 7.8 ounce, um, batch that I had left, um, paid this no mind, uh, I had to use that to convert to get this number, and then added on, uh, <laughs> basically I had a couple of boil overs, okay, I'm gonna admit it, I had a couple of goof ups where my pot boiled over a couple of times, I was able to save most of the stuff that boiled over, but yeah, I ended up, you know, losing some of my material. Um, the good thing is, is that I did keep good notes. So by the time that boil over happened, I had everything added up and all I needed to do was just add up, you know, how much pomace and how much polysorbate I'd used up to that point and then get the percentages from there. And that told me what the percentage of this leftover amount is, which, you know, um, by that point, it, you know, 26.27% super fat of this 7.8 ounces 
was another 2.05 ounces. And then after that, I ended up adding another one and a half ounces of pomace oil, which gave me this number, which is the 3.55. And that's where I get my 45.51% um, for my super fat. And again, you use equal parts, uh, your oils to your polysorbate. So if I use 3.55 ounces of super fat, I have to use 3.55 ounces of polysorbate. And considering the small amount of material I have here. I really didn't like that idea too much. Polysorbate is also very gross. It's very slimy and sticky. It's not very good feeling on my skin. And it doesn't always produce a clear solution. And if you know, as a liquid soap maker, one thing about liquid soap, you know, as far as troubleshooting and issues that you come across is that if your soap is cloudy, you follow, you know, your process of elimination. If your liquid soap is cloudy, chances are you have unsaponified fats. You have free fats in your soap. And so eventually if you let that settle out, they do float out of the, the soap and they you know, float to the top. Um, that being said, polysorbate not completely creating a clear solution every single time means that my soap will still look cloudy and then I'm left guessing, is it completely solubilized or is it not? And that's where I have to let the material sit for a couple of days to find out for sure. Um, there was one point where it actually was the case where it was still cloudy and I let it sit out for two or three days and then there was a little layer of oil sitting on top. So I don't like polysorbate for that reason. Um, I will be picking something else. Again, I, I do have a lot of searching and researching to do in this whole aspect. Um, so this is, uh, this is it. Um, this is just me documenting, you know, again, my progress with my crazy experiments. Um, that, again, another aspect of lowering your pH is, again, super fatting. Um, but I, I'm going to recap. The super fatting for this particular soap required 45.51% of a super fat. In conjunction with that super fat, I had to use equal parts of a solubilizer, which was polysorbate 80, which means that I would need 45.51% of my recipe to be polysorbate, my final recipe to be polysorbate 80, and that I'm not comfortable with. Um, then, and even still, and I still had to use a little bit of lauric acid to bring down the pH anyway, because I plateaued at a certain pH with the fatty acids by themselves. Um, I don't know why. I'm, <clears throat> again, I'm still doing research. Um, my assumption is that they are weak acids, and therefore they don't um, exchange their protons very easily in order to lower the pH. Um, I could be wrong on that assumption. Um, I have picked up Kevin Dunn's scientific soap making book and I'm trying to read it and I'm trying to digest the information. It's very difficult to do, especially when he, you know, starts out straight into chemical equations, which is math for science. Um, anyways, uh, I think that's it. If you want to try the, in this method, I mean, you know, be my guest and maybe you can find something else. Maybe a different recipe doesn't require, you know, a 45%, 45, almost a 50% super fat. Maybe a recipe you use doesn't need a 50% super fat. Maybe it only need 20%. Some fatty acid chains are stronger than others as far as adjusting pH, and some aren't. It's dependent, again. Um, that, that's the, the, the beauty of soap making, is anything goes. And it just takes a lot of research and reading and an understanding of what's going on. Um, so here's another one of those I did it. <laughs> I'm being silly. 
Uh, that's a 7.42 with the use of a 45.51% super fat and like 0.4 ounces of lauric acid paired with that. Um, I don't know the percentage for the lauric acid. I didn't bother accounting for it as far as percentage wise. But again, having to use a 45, 46% super fat is more than enough for me to say I don't like this method of lowering the pH. Um, if you want, uh, well, I guess I'll go ahead and do the, you know, the hand washing test um, because, well, I guess that's kind of required, maybe. Um, there we go, just studying the camera. Now, um, just to you know, point this out, I don't have high expectations for uh, olive oil soap, high pH or low pH, you know, completely alkaline or you know, slightly neutral or mostly neutral. I don't have high expectations for it because olive oil soap is low cleansing. It doesn't form a lot of bubbles. Um, I have my primary batch over there. And, you know, as a comparison, I've washed my hands with that, and then I washed my hands with this, and they both, you know, low sudsing. So that is my other expectation with this soap. So I don't go in saying, oh my god, it's going to have awesome bubbles. It's, it's not, because that's not what olive oil does. Um, just put that right there. Here we go. Now I did notice that um, under the water it has um, some bubbling. So it will bubble under water agitation, but it's not a lot. It, it's literally here and gone. Um, it washes off very clean still for having a, you know, 45% super fat added to it, it still washes off very clean. It's not oily or greasy. I mean, even the polysorbate being the way it is, which is pretty sticky and, and gross, that doesn't affect the feel of the soap too much. I mean, yeah, it still feels slick right now. I mean, you can see how like slick and shiny my hand is. But as I run it under here, There's no sliminess. It does not strip my skin the way a higher pH soap normally does. Um, it's very, very soft. It doesn't feel tight, and, that, and that's what I, I love about doing this. Is that the end result is worth it to me. Um, it feels better to my skin. And you know what? Why the hell not? I'll pour a little bit into the sink, and you can see what I mean about, you know, the water agitation portion. Like I said, the bubbles are here and gone, just like that. Um, but again, the feel of this is really nice on my skin. Um, I don't like the Castile soap like this in my hair. Um, I found that, you know, with the soap close to my scalp, it doesn't clean very well. Duh, it's low cleansing. So my scalp is left feeling very greasy. And, and slick, and I'm so sorry about the dishes, oh god. Um, <laughs> bad, bad me, bad me, sorry. Um, but anyways, uh, it didn't feel good in my hair. I mean, the rest of my hair, 
like you know away from the scalp it felt just fine it didn't feel heavy it wasn't very greasy or oily but just right close to my scalp it didn't feel good and my scalp needs that cleansing so this is not something i recommend for somebody who has oily hair um i do use this on my son and i wish he were awake right now well actually i don't i'm enjoying the quiet but <laughs> He's napping. Um, I do use this on my son, and he has some extremely long blonde hair. And I say this a lot in, in a couple of my the, the groups I've joined on Facebook. Long blonde hair. It's down to his bum almost. And I use this on him. And his hair is easier to brush. It is manageable. There are, the, the tangles come out a lot easier in his hair. Um which is great for him because for the most part brushing his hair has always been very difficult as far as you know him being comfortable and it not hurting him um it leaves his hair very soft and silky and and just baby fine it's it's baby hair so you, you need to treat that gently and i would definitely recommend that this type of soap the you know altered doctored, whatever you want to call it, the low pH pomace, Castile soap, I definitely recommend for babies. Or people who have baby fine hair and a dry scalp or something like that. Um, with any shampoo or anything you use in your hair or on your skin, it really is a trial and error finding out what works for you anyhow. So this doesn't work for me, but it works for my son. It might work for another adult or whoever has different needs. For me, no. I need something that's a little bit more cleansing for my scalp. But anyways, um, that's it. Um, I'm going to scent and bottle this. Um, you see how clear that is too? That's really cool. Um, something else I forgot to mention, and this is what I don't like about, another reason why I didn't like the poly sorbet. Um, because, you know, during the process of, you know, warming things up and heating everything, there was water loss. And so what I did is, you know, I created a very, very concentrated sugar solution with, you know, boiled water and adding sugar to it until it could no longer dissolve any more sugar. And then I add that to soap just to bring it back up to its original, its original weight. Um, I do believe that the sugar is playing a role in this soap being this clear. I'm also seeing what looks like the sugar precipitating out at the bottom. So I'm pretty sure if I heat this up right now, it, it'll all dissolve back into this soap. Um, I might just filter it out instead. And the soap's still clear, so it's obviously not affecting too much. So. I don't like polysorbate 80. If you happen to want to use it and you like it and you like what it does, you know, that's cool. But I don't like it. And for many different reasons. But anywho, um, that's it. I have done it again. Like, you've seen the pH. 7.42. Clear soap. Felt great on my hands. Like they don't feel dry and sticky. Or they don't feel dry, they don't feel tight. Um, nothing slimy about them. It rinses off very well. Um, I hope this inspires you to experiment more and to think outside of the box. Um, I was at one point many months ago where I believed because the big soap making gurus on the internet said so that the pH couldn't be lowered and that it's not soap when you do that. And I've been challenged to do otherwise, and I've done it. So for those of you that, you know, think it's not possible, you might want to rethink that because some of the most awesome inventions that we have were made by people who were told they couldn't do it or that it's not possible. And look at soap making right now. A lot of things we were told we couldn't do, and we're doing. So um, just keep that in mind next time you want to tell me that 
what I'm doing is impossible. Because that's also you telling me that I'm a liar. And I don't like being called a liar. It's, 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 it's pretty nasty being called a liar when you're being really honest. Anywho, um, happy soaping.